We just finished a um, uh, almost a little bit better than three hour uh, every interview with uh, Mr. Kushner. I uh, found him to be uh, straightforward, forthcoming. Uh, wanted uh, to answer every question that we had and uh, was willing to uh, follow up on any questions that we think of later that we didn't get asked this morning. We had a good opportunity to ask Mr. Kushner uh, questions uh, this morning. Um, he expressed uh, and his counsel receptivity to coming back uh, for further questions, um, but it was a very productive session. Once again, it was a busy day, as we said, on Capitol Hill. That was Congressman Mike Conaway and Adam Schiff of the House Intel Committee following a meeting with Jared Kushner today. The president's son-in-law and senior advisor appeared back on Capitol Hill, flanked by his lawyer, Abby Lowell, for a second day in a row. Congressman Chris Stewart, Republican of the state of Utah, has been kind enough to hang out with us tonight. He is a member of House Intel and was in the meeting with Jared Kushner today. And, Congressman, I get the restrictions on you. You can't talk about what you heard in that room today. You can, you can talk perhaps about how it was delivered. So I'm interested in your characterization of the witness, your description of what you heard, and where on the plane of things between uh, put him in a minimum security federal facility and nothing to see here yeah. did what you witnessed today fall. Well, good evening, Brian. It's good to be with you. I would think it's more towards the second option that you presented with me. I think he was a very credible witness. He was obviously very sincere. Uh, I, I think we could see that he was really trying to answer every question as completely and fully as possible. I think Republicans and Democrats kind of walked away with that impression. And, and I will say this. if. If you're someone who, you know, goes to bed at night and dreams of Donald Trump being impeached, uh, Jared Kirchner just isn't the guy who's going to get you there. I think that he was very honest, and at the end of the day, there just wasn't much there that we could really glob, on, glob a hold of and say, okay, this is something that's concerning to us, or this is something that leads to the collusion narrative. Um, just really wasn't there today. Do you ever take a step back and reflect on the fact that the president has called what you're looking into a hoax? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I just disagree with the president on that. I think that there's legitimate questions that need to be asked. There's answers that we need to provide the American people. Oh, my heavens, one way or another, they, the American people deserve an answer to this. If there's nothing to this, then we need to tell them. If there's something there, then once again, we need to investigate that and to tell them. But it's far better for the president not to have this hanging over his head. Let us complete the investigation. And as I said, if there's nothing there, we're, we're serving him by telling people that. But if some people need to be held accountable, that that's the way the process and the system is set up to, to serve the American people. And either way, it's a win-win. You say uh, Jared Kushner isn't going to get uh, folks there, the folks who are, are kind of cheering uh, actively or passively for impeachment. I want to read you just one quote. This is Ryan Lizza in a new New Yorker piece uh, about Michael Hayden. Quote, Michael Hayden, the former head of the National Security Agency, told me that he was convinced the meeting, this is at Trump Tower, uh, was a classic soft approach by Russian intelligence. While Kushner claimed that the meeting was irrelevant, from a Russian intelligence perspective, it would have been seen as a clear signal. At the end, they have established that these guys are willing, Hayden said, pausing. How do I put this? They did not reject a relationship. So, Congressman, you can see how uh, maybe through uh, ignorance or innocence or naivete, uh, Mr. Kushner could have get, gotten caught up in something bigger than him. Yeah, I think that, you know, what Mr. Hayden said in that scenario is true. And I think Mr. Kushner has said that he regrets that this meeting took place and took place under the auspice that he thought that it was. But the reality is, again, if something had come from, you know, this meeting or if materials had been passed or subsequent meetings had been requested and if they'd followed up in any way, we'd be talking about something very, very different. But the reality is they did have this one meeting. It was fairly short. He left early. Uh, as, as far as, uh, you know, his explanation is, while he was there, they were only talking about this, this Russian orphanage and, and the adoption issue, which he had no interest in at the time. And it may have been an attempt by you know, Russian agents or Russian government to seek influence. I, I don't think that it is. The evidence certainly doesn't indicate that it was. But let's, you know, say for the sake of the conversation that they were trying to do that. The reality is, is that it didn't go anywhere. And now here we are. We had our meeting with Mr. Kushner today. And that seems to be kind of where we are. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.